In 2021, two young Oriental classical musicians called Two Set Violin produced a YouTube video on Asian hate. I would now like to see a video on Caucasian hate in which a couple of white people speak about their own experiences of racial prejudice in which they are the recipients of such bigotry. Negroes, Orientals and Asians are just as able to display racial prejudice and bigotry as any fat frog-faced southern sheriff from Alabama. Marxists tell us slavery, colonialism and the exploitation of black and brown people are all the fault of every white person in existence, apparently. Egyptians, brown people, kept Jewish people as slaves for many years before Moses led them out of bondage, but presumably we aren't supposed to speak of that. The crux of the matter is that white people do not possess a monopoly on the ability to enslave other racial groups. When I observe Marxists whinge and whine about all the terrible things we did to other races, the desire to leap up and throttle them is impossible to resist. How many Negro slaves have I ever possessed? None. How many Japs did I lock in a prison camp? None. How many countries did I invade and colonize? None. I am innocent and do not possess any Caucasian guilt whatsoever. As for Asian hate, well, look at how Japanese shoguns and Chinese court officials treated their own people. It was never necessary for white people to invade their nations and show them how to enslave people. They had already learned how to do that for themselves. These people today, who think they are so oppressed, who regard themselves as victims, need to wake up and take a careful look at their lives. Here's a suggestion. It applies to almost anyone, anywhere. Whenever you feel depressed, despondent, or just plain umpty, consider this. Think of all the bad things that have happened to you, that you did not deserve. Now think of all the good things that have happened to you, that you never earned. I did not deserve to be bullied at school, bullied by an abusive stepfather, rejected by a lazy, idle, good-for-nothing mother, and cursed with two medical afflictions, dyspraxia and homosexuality. Well, tough. I could have been born with motor neuron disease, spina bifida or diabetes, but thank God I was not. For this, I am profoundly grateful. What we need, especially in America, is this sense of gratitude. There is not much genuine racial hatred in Britain. There is even less in America. Indeed, America is the least racist, most liberated nation on the planet. If you doubt that, consider this fact. Since the end of World War II, more black people of African descent have emigrated to America than the entire number of black people who were enslaved during the 18th and 19th centuries. If America really was as racist and dreadful as the Marxists want us to believe, and if communist countries really are the paragons of perfection, then why did all those Negroes flee to America? Why did they not go to, say, Cuba, North Korea or Vietnam? People in America should be grateful. Grateful to live in the least racist, least bigoted, most liberated and most economically vibrant nation on earth. There is another reason they, and we, should be grateful. Consider the tens of thousands of American servicemen who sacrificed their lives in World War II, in Korea and in Vietnam in order to protect us from the two most pernicious forms of socialism that have ever blighted the planet. We owe those brave men and women a gigantic debt of gratitude. Incidentally, have you noticed how most Republican presidents are called fascist by loony lefties in America? This is ironic given the origin of fascism. Ask any of your friends if they can name the creator of fascism and tell them they are not allowed to use their metal tapping machines to look it up. That's cheating. We know who created the concept of capitalism, Adam Smith. We know who created the concept of communism, Karl Marx. Yet few people know who created the concept of fascism. Well, it was an Italian, Giovanni Gentile, 1875-1944. to Now, here is the fact all lefties will hate. Giovanni Gentile was a socialist. This is why Marxists have tried so desperately to airbrush him out of history, to erase all memory of him, even though he was a highly respected and influential socialist thinker during the first half of the 20th century. He believed there were two basic forms of democratic government. First, there was liberal democracy as espoused in America. 
He dismissed this as selfish, since it promoted the individual and focused on liberty and personal rights. Second, there was what he called true democracy, in which individuals willingly subordinate themselves to the state. In the opinion of Gentile, fascism was the most ideal and practical form of socialism. The advantage of fascism over pure Marxism, so he claimed, was that it mobilized people because it appealed to their national identity as well as to their class. In other words, fascists are socialists with a national identity. He said there must be a complete absence of any distinction between the private interest and the public interest. It was Benito Mussolini who put this theory into practice in Italy from 1922 to 1943. In his pamphlet, La Dottrina del Fascismo, he wrote, All is in the state, and nothing human exists or has value outside the state. But this is merely a paraphrase lifted straight from Gentile. Fascism reveals a profound kinship to the ideology of modern socialism, particularly that promoted by loony lefties in America. This is one of the many reasons why I am a conservative and a capitalist. I believe in small, strong government, in which individual liberty can flourish. Capitalism is the most moral and genuinely democratic system of government ever devised. By contrast, the socialists, including and especially the fascist variant, seek to submit the resources of the individual and industry to the service of a centralized state. This is why all forms of communism must be confronted, challenged and eradicated, lest we witness a resurgence of the terror that afflicted Europe during the 20th century. The Republican Party was instituted in 1854 primarily to prevent slavery being exported into the northern states. At its first convention in 1856, its stated intention was to eradicate those twin relics of barbarism, polygamy and slavery. Abraham Lincoln was the first Republican president of America. His opposition to slavery may therefore seem unexpected if what you understand of the Republicans is based on loony lefty propaganda, but if you investigate history, even recent history, the true nature of the Democratic Party is revealed. The Democrats defended slavery, started the Civil War and opposed Reconstruction afterwards, which included giving all freed slaves the right to vote. They imposed segregation, perpetrated lynching of Negroes, and opposed civil rights legislation right up until the early 1960s. In the infamous court case of 1857, Dred Scott v. Sanford, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the notion that slaves were property, not citizens. Of the nine justices who sat to judge the case, two were Republicans and seven were Democrats. Both Republican justices dissented. The seven Democrats voted in favor. After John Wilkes Booth assassinated Lincoln in 1865, Democrat Andrew Johnson assumed the post of president and the Reconstruction deal proposed by Lincoln was abandoned. The Democrats were almost unanimously opposed to the 13th Amendment of 1865, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment of 1866, which awarded full citizen status to Negroes, and the 15th Amendment of 1869, which gave Negroes the right to vote. Ultimately, all three amendments were eventually passed, but only due to universal Republican support. In 1870, the first black senator and the first black congressman were both sworn into office. Both men were Republicans. Dozens of black men were elected into state legislators, and by 1900, there were 22 Negro Republicans elected to serve in Congress. The Democrats did not elect a black man to Congress until 1935. Every black senator was a Republican until 1979. Only in that year did the Democrats finally elect a black senator into its party. While on this subject, the first female member of Congress, the first Hispanic governor, the first Hispanic senator, and the first Asian senator were all Republicans. In 1862, the Moral Anti-Bigamy Act was passed by the Republican-controlled Congress to end polygamy, and in 1920, after 52 years of Democratic Party opposition, the 19th Amendment was ratified, which gave women the right to vote. Again, this was passed by a Republican-controlled Congress. In the vote, only 59% of House Democrats and 41% of Senate Democrats supported women's suffrage, compared to 91% of House Republicans and 82% of Senate Republicans.
Finally, it was a member of the Democrats, Nathan Bedford Forrest, who founded the Ku Klux Klan. Democrat President Woodrow Wilson fully supported the Klan. He resegregated federal agencies and he arranged for the famous 1915 film by D.W. Griffith, Birth of a Nation, to be screened in the White House under its original title, The Klansman. This was the first film to be shown in the White House, an inauspicious start. In the 1920s, it was Calvin Coolidge, the unsung hero of Republican presidents, who stated, The rights of blacks are just as sacred as those of any other citizen. Also, it was Coolidge who officially promoted the rights of Red Indians to be granted the status of full citizens of the USA. When Jesse Owens, the famous Negro sprinter and a Republican, won four gold medals at the Berlin Olympic Games in 1936, Democratic President Franklin Roosevelt snubbed him when, at a reception in the White House, only white athletes were invited. When 80% of Republican senators supported the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Democratic senators in the House filibustered for 75 days until the Republicans managed to secure sufficient additional votes to ensure the act was passed. Unable to prevent black people being allowed to vote in elections, the Democrats decided to use every means at their disposal to persuade Negroes to vote for them. Democrat President Lyndon Johnson actually said, and this is on record, I'll have them niggers voting Democrat for 200 years. With such a deplorable track record, is it any wonder I'm a conservative who favours the Republican Party? <laughs>